The universe is one big collective experience. We are it. It am us. From the smallest star to the largest beetle, everything is the same when you get right down to it. If you get small enough, you can fit inside a quark and go, Hello, me. It's me. You. And the quark will laugh knowingly. To quote the most medium beetle, Ringo, we are the universe experiencing itself on this pale blue dot. E equals MC squared, Ringo continued. But the point is, the cosmos. If you're gonna take anything away from this, I'd say it's that. You get asked a question later, the cosmos. You need a little caffeine boost, cosmos. Tired? Need a nappy? Well, too bad. There is scientifics to bewilder. Welcome to the Small Beans program, Bewilderments and Scientifics. This podcast series is an ongoing conversation with the celebrity and educator, the prolific and brilliant Professor Scott Bug. I'm your host, Abe Epperson. I have no scientific degree, but have long been in love with physics, biology, and the scientific method. I only hope to act on behalf of all of us as an intermediate, choosing topics and asking questions we all hope to understand more fully. And to enlighten us, I'd like to introduce Professor Scott Bug. Hello there. I'm Professor Scott Bug, captain of Don't I Know It on the USS Brain, a secret laboratory for teaching dark science. Before that, I studied all of the math in the world underneath an unnamed temple. You can too, if you dare. I have also taught, well, you name it, at the University of College in West Glombenchum, where I wrote, produced, and starred in Science Facts, the musical. If you are interested in what the captain has to say about dark science, sign up today at secretbrainlab.gov slash bewilderifics and use promo code SCIENTILDERMENTS. Uh, yes, and we will have in the description of the, today's show all of the relevant links uh, that we mentioned. Okay. Um, thank you for being with us today, as always, Professor. Um, today's topic is air. Uh, defined as an invisible gas that surrounds the earth. We breathe it. It nourishes us. I love to talk about how it came to be, like what it does to us and what's the future of air. Ah, wonderful questions. Quite a few answers to come. Air is perhaps the, if not the, most important of the five elements, which are air, space, planet, wet and feelings. Air is what keeps us intact. It surrounds us and quite literally binds us and the universe together. Between you and me is air, pushing against our skin, our hair, the threads in our clothes. And without this air between us, the clothes would fall apart, disintegrating into particles floating around in empty space. Without this air between us, our skin would lift from our muscles and fats, our muscles and fats would lift from our bones, and our bones would turn to powder. Air is, interestingly, the strongest, hardest of the elements. It fills the space and puts and keeps everything in its proper shape. It is the third element to develop, first with space, and then planet, and then, of course, the air appeared to make sense of it all, an instant later creating wet, as the wets were mixed in with the planets until the air separated them. Then, as you can guess, feelings. Without air... We would be mush. The universe would be a sloppy, formless stew of everything, floating in nothing, screaming out in agony, begging for shape. Therefore, I think we can all agree, the future of air is, we hope, more of the same. Wow. Yeah. Uh, enlightening. Absolutely. Um, I have a few follow-up questions. You mentioned air keeps our skin muscles fats and bones all together what what is the natural process of muscles and fats fats lifting from our bones called and like why does this happen uh well it happens uh, for many reasons that's called uh dejumbification is mm -hmm. the technical term um mm -hmm. i think yeah yes i'm sure you've heard it on um mm -hmm. all, in every single uh class both right. science math the arts <laughs> History, every, class. every yeah. single class you take, I'm sure they've mentioned uh, this de um, it, I mean, it happens because it's the state of things. It is the natural state of things. As I said, mm -hmm. space and planets were first. 
you have space. Within that space, you have planet, and that is the the mushy stuff, the dirt, mm-hmm. the 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 skin flakes, the blood. Um, name a thing. Uh, cats. The cats, indeed. All sort of deformless goo of a cat mixing in mm. with all the rest. That is the natural oh. state of things. But as we know, inertia says that the natural state of things cannot always be. That's what it says. Look it up. Right. And therefore, the natural state of things to is to unnature itself, is to move forward, to change. And so right. air was developed. It is... In, in, in the same sense that from nothing is something and so, from something can come nothing, from that formless glob came form. Air appeared. Little bubbles of air started oh. pushing these things apart. Uh. I was like, I, that, that, that I can sense a cat in there. Bubble pushes the cat out and then there's a full cat enveloped gotcha. with air. And so it is the state of unbeing and the state of being and the unnatural state of naturalization. And that's the clearest I can say and make it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like nonsense, but I believe you. Indeed, it sounds that way, but we are, you know, again, you've heard this in your classes. Were you paying attention? Yeah. Well, then this is on you. Fair enough. Um... Some scientists disagree. Like I know this is a like there's a hubbub, and I'm glad you kind of mention it. Uh, all in the scientific community, there's kind of a, a slight disagreement. Some scientists believe that planet was second. What evidence do we have? Yeah, I know. As soon as I said, it. what evidence do we have that air wasn't second? You know, after space. So you have clearly said just to get everyone on the same page. Air was the third develop, uh, third element to develop. It was space, planet, then air. But some people think it's uh, space, air, planet. And, like, you know, what, can you kind of talk about the debate here? There is no debate. These are quacks. These are hacks. These are simply anti-science scientists who want attention. Are we going to give them that attention? Yes, of course. Because what the saying is wrong, and we need to say why. We have hard evidence. We have photographic evidence of space. There's no Mm. air in there. There's no shape of space. No air. Right, makes sense. When planet appeared, there was indeed no shape. From space, planet, and air, that is shape. Yes? Yes. If we can look at planet in space... And we see uh-huh. this blob, this gooey nothingness of something, but there's no shape to it. You get a sense that right. it's there, right. but you don't see That's... it. It's not, there's not, there's no squares. There's no circles. There's no cats. It's surprisingly logical. You'd need that first. You, you know? need that first. And then the air appears and creates the shape. If right. you have, say, you know, um, let's say... We're being simple. A goo. Yes. And yeah, you, yeah, I'm on board. And you drop that goo in a wet, let's say, uh, easiest example, water, if we have to. Right, right. Yeah. So you drop the goo in the wet, and then it trickles, it, it sort of forms these little tiny little rivers, these these dances of, of, of particles through the water. You see it misting in and wisping, these little wisps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It wasn't like that before you put it in the wet. It was like it after that. The wisps appeared later. Right. If air yeah. came and then planet came, we wouldn't have seen the planet formless. We right. must have it just seen. Makes no sense. Exactly. Yeah. It's illogical. It's, and it again, shape. photographic evidence. Right. Yeah. We have photos of planets. You know, we, we have photo. We have photographs of the blob. Google right. the big blob. Google it. Go see right. for yourself. Yeah. It's, Do your uh, own research, but also you listen to me. It, <clears throat> right. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. But like, it's uh, these, you know, these second errors. Uh, you know, the, the. It's really funny to me because it's just like go outside. Like, there's 
just go just go outside listen to scientists astronauts they take photos of it all the time satellites all the time and they still think air is second it's 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 bizarre but you know here we are um you know yeah, there's whatever. nba players saying it and exactly it's just all over the place the, the, are, it's on social media we are the, the age of misinformation and th- that is what we have to deal with i'm glad you're here to stop the fake you know dissemination of i am grateful that you have me to do this yeah. <laughs> uh i have one more question before we kind of um we segue, uh, which is that I, I think it was, you kind of touched upon it earlier and I wanted to point out the phrase that you used uh, at the top of this, which was, uh, when we were formless, uh, you know, in the universe, it was just a bunch of stuff begging for shape. Now science finds this all this time, this concept of entropy, right? This is something you taught me mm. where everything kind of wants to become more disordered. Why is it not true in this case? Why do things want are begging for shape? Um, that is a fascinating question. It is the, um, I sort of pointed to this, the, the unnaturing of nature, um, mm. the opposite of same. Um, there will right. always be an equal and opposite want. Yes, yes, everything right. wants to become more disordered, but everything also wants to be in its right place. Uh, it's the conflict. It's the conflict of being a human being. We are constantly right. wanting things that are bad for us. We're constantly wanting things that negate our needs, yes? Right. Um, I think my, my, quite uh, the more fascinating um, question here is, um, and this, I would say, is a bit controversial, although it should not be. It is completely logical. Um, I, at the beginning of this, pointed out that uh, the final element was feelings. And I would argue right. that this want, this begging for shape, is indeed a feeling. Um, mm. So I have written several papers, and I talk about this um, in all the classes that I teach. I believe that feelings came earlier. I do not believe it was the final element. I believe that... Mm-hmm. Even before planet, we had feeling. Because if you are in space, let's say, and then suddenly there's the big blob, planet, just mm-hmm. gooing around, gooing about, as we say. Mm-hmm. And it is begging for shape, and thus air appears. How can one Ooh. beg for something? How can one want something? How can one mm. scream in agony for something it does not have, if not for feelings right um it seems quite um quite obvious to me um right but i suppose i've always been a bit of the a a bad boy yes of the the scientific community that that actually is a great segue as we talk about kind of like the repercussions of uh air forming into things and as we talked about earlier uh, kind of like how there is some kind of debate around this, or air has a seeming contentious kind of um, view in the public eye. A lot of people have a lot of thoughts about it. So I'd love to segue to our next segment, uh, where we bring in uh, we bring in a person who's a an expert in the field and discuss with them, you know, their specialization. Today we have the pleasure of calling up national best-selling author and influencer Juliet Parker. Working in the air public space, she has sold millions of units of her canned product, Girl Air. And today, she joins us in this conversation. Hello, Juliet. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, thank you for being here. Oh, I'm, I'm so thrilled to be here. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that um, this is such an under-discussed topic in spite of the fact that it literally surrounds us. So let's get into it. Yeah. Okay. So that's perfect. So uh, we brought you on for today's episode because you have a highly specialized job that's focused in air. Uh, We want to, you know, shout out Girl Air and, you know, obviously you influence millions. Um, So tell us more about your specialization, your uh, story or, you know, just like how do you tell tell us how you got here? Okay, so I'll start by um, addressing kind of the elephant in the room. So my name is Juliet Parker, and you might remember me from uh, when I was a teenager when I uh, homicided my parents. And um, obviously, that was a really difficult time for me. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I once once I was released from prison, I thought, you know, 
what did I took someone's air, you know, I took someone's air from them for the rest. I ended. And, and so I, I thought to myself, um, after getting a, a a business degree, uh, I thought to myself, how can I monetize, uh, this extreme trauma that I've been through? And that's Mm -hmm. kind of how girl air, uh, came to be where I realized that we're surrounded by air. Air can be very, very dirty. It can be full of all this stuff. And uh, I found that to be pretty sexist. So I started my company, Girl Air, and uh, right. I sell cans of premium air that we mm. have uh, that we have made in our factory in Florida. And uh, yeah, we've been, I've been doing that for the last five years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, personally, and, you know, obviously we have relations with you mm-hmm. being, you know, one of the um, advertisers that we run on the show. I just want to say brave. Um, Thank you so much. I completely agree. It's very brave what I do. Yeah. And what yeah. I did. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so what uh, I, I kind of want to get uh, professors two cents in this. Uh, have you tried her can product girl air? Um, I have, um, I've, I mean, you know, we have to, in order to advertise it, you know, we want to make sure right. we, we appreciate the product. Um, I know it's not officially for me. Um, mm. but okay, thank I, you for acknowledging that. That's of course, really important to me. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to, um, take, it, uh, take it as my own. I don't want to, um, you know, push my own, uh, uh, persona or or sex or gender. I mean, um, onto, yeah, onto, yeah. I mean, you know, obvi- obviously, um, mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful. Um, I support any sort of spreading of air. I think that we um, need to understand and support. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a proponent of universal air. Um, personally, I think that's that, interesting. Um, that, yeah, it should be go. available. Um, uh, free at the point of service for every single no, no, human no. being on the planet. Um, I, but that, that is... doesn't make sense, um, you know, because because otherwise everyone would be having the same air and it would be like the same amount and it would have the same stuff in it. And that's kind of like not where I'm coming from. Um, for, right. for, sure, sure, sure. I, I do understand mm-hmm. that. I think that, you know, there's there's some things that we, we do, um, you know, science is uh, mostly, it's largely about control. We learn about things and then we control them. Control, we, yeah, very we, patriarchal we of you, them. professor. Um, well, I would I would argue that the universe is is, is indeed quite patriarchal um, in its construction um, and the way in which it functions. Um, and uh, I, my, my view is to sort of uh, dismantle that um, because uh, because of the way that air functions and the way it is is grown and 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 experienced, um, it is a bit off limits to to some people. You, um, for example, um, yeah, Juliet shouldn't you shouldn't have to make this product to this girl air. I shouldn't should, have to sell. It shouldn't have to cans of air for fifty dollars. I think you're absolutely right, but I will, and I'm going to. Of of course, right. that, that is where right. that's where we're at. We we do yeah. not have a universal air um, in um, in this nation or uh, many m- many nations, and uh, so that is just where we're at. You know, you have to fill the spaces. Um, yeah. Not that, um, to be clear, I'm not talking about actual the element of space. I'm just the, speaking the, colloquially. Uh, colloquially, um, the air public airspace. Yes, yeah. exactly. So we, yeah. you know, we 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 must fill that void. Um, and so, um, in that respect, I do, um, respect and appreciate that this is available for everybody. Um, Uh Mm. but my, my ultimate goal is to one day not have to have these canned air, um, products Mm. available to people because you can go outside and just experience all the air. Yes, well, it's a bit it's dirty. True. It's but... natural. It's already natural. What makes girl air more uh, better than what's than normal air, for example? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I'll try to explain. It's not like you know either of you could possibly understand, but okay, uh, girl air is essentially a way for women to reclaim the air that's been taken from them over the years. So, for example, uh, before you you know before I uh, would go out to give a public 
speaking engagement, which I do all the oh. time. You know, I'm speaking at LuLaRoe. I'm speaking at the Girl Boss Convention. I'm an entrepreneur that has been convicted of a double homicide. And mm-hmm. that's like really appealing to people. And I get really nervous before I go on stage. And so what I do is um, I just, you know, there, there's a little, as you know, there's a little hose attached to the girl mm-hmm. air. And mm-hmm. I have been criticized for the size of the hose. It's really hard to get your whole mouth around. But if you really commit to it, um, as you know, Professor, you can get your mouth around the hose. But I I do hear the criticism around the size of the hose you have to put in your mouth to access the girl air. Anyways, uh, I, you know, unhinge my jaw. I get my jaw around the hose and I uh, inhale deeply. And as you may know, or maybe you don't because it is a product for girls, but it just, it hits so hard that sometimes I, I, uh, I get really dizzy and I have to sit down and sometimes I even pass out. And that is how I know that it's working because, you know, when you walk outside right, you as can't. a woman, uh, right. you don't usually just pass out. Right. Like, but this is such refined, like main, it's like mainlining air and it it kind of, it gives you a jolt to your entire system. Uh, There is only one serving per can. But, uh, you know, I've never, I've never, you can watch all of my uh, speeches on YouTube. And I mean, they're pretty freaking awesome if you ask me. So, yeah. Yeah, I've caught a few of them. I haven't gotten to make the rounds on your <clears throat> you had your second series which was just not really speeches but more of just recordings of you walking around 24/7. Oh yeah, my philosophizing sessions. Right, right. That's yeah. what the, Yeah, I I've tried to got, get my way around those, but it, it's tough, you know. I I I do have to live. Something that is amazing that uh, I've been able to do with Girl Air is uh, you just take a huge hit at, uh, of it and you just walk around the zoo and just like yell what you're thinking you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah my my girlfriend uh uses your product and she typically she will something something she loves to do after she uses her, your product is mm-hmm. uh fall on the ground and like writhe around like a snake for about 20 minutes yeah that's the patriarchy leaving her body exactly <laughs> and i always ask like that that's so cool that's really okay. Well, first of all, um, I don't think your gaze is really something that is uh, should be taken into consideration here. But I guess uh-huh. I'm glad you think it's cool. Well, you know, um, yeah, absolutely. And I apologize. Uh, I think this so is going much. well as moderator and interviewer. This is uh, going great. Um, uh, Professor, I had a question for you. Did you get a chance to look at the ingredients list um, on Girl Air? Um, I have. I, there are a few that mm-hmm. I um, I need. I have been needing to look into a bit more. Um, okay, like not, such as what? Okay, well, there are just a few um, that I feel. Um, there's some that I I think um, you don't necessarily like. They're not. They're not things I've ever heard of. Uh huh. Um, and I, I'm there's like femsigen. Is that is, yeah, is this? Fem- a, it, it, I I can't I can't seem to find any. And I've I've I I have watched all of your talks. I've watched them each um, at least twice. Some th- a third. Ally. Um, I've I take notes. Um, they're very very uh-huh. very engaging. Um, uh-huh. but I haven't heard you mention Femsigen then. Um, yeah. Well, I I was hoping uh, I was hoping you'd ask me about that because I actually have an upcoming um, hearing with the FDA to talk about uh, that exact ingredient, um, and I think that you know what people should really keep in mind when these hearings take place is that femsigen, uh, it's air should be stimulating, right? Like for example, uh, when I when when I uh, kill both of my parents right mm-hmm. yes. um i was I, I was at a very heightened state right of i was course. very stimulated i was very upset and uh what girl air seeks to do is kind of channel that same vibe but in like a friendly way you know and so i had a uh, femsigen uh, developed in a uh, in a laboratory as you would say 
uh, because uh, I, I wanted to give women that surge of confidence that I felt on that day in June in uh, in 2007 and mm-hmm. kind of just distill that for other women. And I think that that is where the writhing comes in. And that is where the shouting your thoughts at the zoo comes in. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that it is, uh, you know, first of all, it is not addictive in any way. Uh, and, uh, second of all, I mean, I think it's just a a great channel for, for women to, uh, express themselves. And honestly, if, you know, if, if that hearing goes the wrong way, uh, it's, it's due to sexism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I do, I do. Um, I, I, I hope it goes well. Um, I have been at these, um, before, um, they uh-huh. will ask you many questions. I do hope you're you're prepared to um, sort of explain the the molecular breakdown of some of these um, these things that you you've you've put in this product, um, which oh, again we endorse. Um, use our promo code for 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 as many um, cans as you'd like. Um, you get um, it's the same price. There's no actual deal, but. Um, by putting in the promo code, you give permission uh, for um, the girl air uh, to to download your data. Um, yes, absolutely. So make sure to use the promo code. Um, so I, I guess what I what I was what I was tr- trying to get at a little bit was so this is just like strictly theoretical, but um, you were talking about universal air, right? Like air that everyone can get for free, which sounds cuckoo to me, but, you know, saying that maybe we did and that there were perhaps government contracts available to, uh, you know, put other ingredients in the air. Uh, do you, what, what, what um, as a, as a uh, professional, as a professor who, who I could maybe quote, uh, do you think femcigen in universal airspace would be, would be a positive, a positive thing? I will be delicate with my words um, because I believe that air should be universal in its purest form. I would not necessarily support um, putting additional um, chemicals or Uh um, sort of um, synthetic um, devices or uh, microchips. Okay, but it's like not a device. It's like not. It's like not a microchip. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I know because I did not get the vaccine. So, like, obviously, I'm very anti microchip. Of course, okay? of course, you would know. It's yes. not microchips. Um, it's just a. It's just a chemical for, for the just for us gals. So some stuff is bad if you don't know what it is, but other stuff uh-huh. is good if you don't know what it is. I think you put it. Uh, perfectly there. I mean, and again, we'll go back to, let's go back to 2007. You know, it's all relative. What some people think is bad in a mysterious way of like, how did she do it? How was there no, you know, marks? How was there no evidence? Why did she immediately confess and all that? That's a bad mystery. But in some ways I view it as a good mystery because I don't think I would be, you know, about to to, to talk to the uh, the Biden administration about putting femcigen in the air uh, in the if air, I yeah. had not, you know, killed my parents. So I think that it's all, you know... It's true. The, the world it's... is a mysterious place, and I don't see what adding chemicals to the air is going to do to change that. No, you're absolutely right. We were talking about earlier before you jumped on... Uh... He, a uh, professor, used this phrase "begging for shape," and I was like, "Yeah, isn't the entropy of uh, the the concept of entropy like things want to be more disordered?" And he was like, "Well, sometimes science is like not like exactly the same, and sometimes it is." I think you, I think honestly, you're being very scientific. Literally, exactly, yes. Um, I do have one. So I, 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 um. I will tentatively agree with Mr. Epperson about how um, scientific this is. Oh, great! Um, I, we are very gracious um, that you, you've 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 come to discuss this. I I, I did hear you say um, that you would like to put this this femcigen in the air um, yeah. for all women to breathe. And I yeah. guess my I guess I'm wondering in, if um, you, what 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 of the others who will be breathing that air. That's true. Uh, um, is this something you have um, 
you have considered? Is there a um, a mensogen that 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 will be in the air as well? It, it right. will, a will, will. What will, about will... us guys? <laughs> what about us? Uh, okay, okay. No, it's all good. I, I don't. I don't mean to center. Um, um, no, us. of course. No, of course you um, don't need to. That, but that's literally what you just did with the question. Okay. Um, yeah, well, yes. I guess I would say that you know when it comes to like air quality, I've always found uh, men to be very entitled. So like, oh, I can't breathe. You know, f- whatever. Mm. We don't need to go back. We don't need to go too far back. But but you know, mm-hmm. I I would say like for once, don't be such a control freak about it. You know, like that's interesting. Yeah, I think that like this is going to improve the lives of women all over the world. We're going to be writhing around. We're going to be shouting our amazing ideas, right? I'm not even going to be on this planet anymore at that point, most likely, if things go oh, as yeah. I'm planning. Mm-hmm. And we'll just see how it affects the men. You know, because men, I mean, <sighs> Professor, you've tried it, right? Did you writhe? What happened? What was your experience? Um, it was very similar to what you've described. Um, uh-huh. I did wake up uh, with a, I would actually call it a delicious foam uh, that formed around my mouth. Um, oh, good. Um, did you I get am, a, oh, so you did a flavor. Uh, yes, I, 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 I will say I am doing various um experiments on this foam. I have saved some. I'm very curious about its um the way in which it reacts, the way uh the way it moves, the way it seems it seems to want to communicate, um oddly right. enough. Um yeah. which may be maybe um what you're you're going for. I I you so 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 um you uh-huh. you're sort of discussing the, uh, your this this plan of yours and you you know releasing yes. this um into the air for uh, for all um all women and then you used the phrase yes. um you and then we'll see and um I, as a science uh, man of science and a, on a scientific podcast I do have to point out that the the sort of and we'll see uh, step. Um, oftentimes comes um, earlier, much earlier, um, where you sort of you will you will hypothesize what could happen. Um, yeah. You you have a think on it. You 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 do that the various very, tests to see. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it just seems like a little regressive, honestly, because it's you know, if mm. theoretically, I feel like worst case, right? I'm a realist, so even if if let's say things go wrong. Right, mm. femcygen doesn't work out for whatever reason. We'll see, mm. or in some cases, you know, if the side effects go the way they go, but maybe you won't be able to see what happens. You might just be able to hear it. Uh, but mm. my my point is, you know, global warming. Can we agree? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. So global warming, which we all agree, uh, is going to kill us in in ten years, anyways. So if femcygen, you know. Worst case scenario, what do we lose? Ten years? Who cares? That's that's when you say it. Mm. Some people don't get to live their whole lives out at all. I like to think that that's not our decision to make because we are not the future. Children are the future. Well, sometimes when you're told that your whole life, you end up, you know, deciding someone's future. I mean, it's true that I I used to be a child, and I don't feel like the future was mine. I guess if that's your point, maybe. And then one day it is your. And then when do when is it when is it no longer my future? I know it's always because again I'm, you're like, like centering yourself here, so I don't. Yeah, you're I, right. I, I'm finding it difficult to respond. I think <clears throat> well, like. I, yeah. Uh, to cent- no, to, no, 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 no. Go ahead. To center, to to center, um, you for a moment, if if I may. Thank you so um, much. Or if you, if you, if you may let me. Yes. Yeah, um, I give you my consent to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, you, 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 you're, okay. So, okay. The thing, cause you've, you've got this. Um, I've got. I'm. Okay. Are you okay? I'm. I'm. I yes, I, I I'm not I'm not quite I'm not quite used to um sort of being at being at this 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 um this loss this this um I've got, there's some the the for some feelings some feelings I'm 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 mm-hmm. I'm processing and I'm trying You're to right. um I don't want okay. to um upset you um well or, or okay heighten heighten your mood to um 
perhaps no, well, I mean, I've, I, 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 I'll take a hit from the can at any moment. So, you know, you just let me know. Indeed, uh, indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, and have you noticed, have you, I guess, have you noticed, do you, you sort of, you hit the can, as it were, um, mm-hmm. yeah. a, a few times a day, um, many times a day, every once a week, is this, um... Oh, I, I, I go through, a, I, I usually do a can with, with meals, generally, unless it's a big day, or a stressful day, or I'm tired, or I feel mm-hmm. very awake, and then sometimes I'll do a couple uh, more, but generally, yeah, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And do you do the flavored, like, do you have foam? Yes, or yes. Or how often do you just do the natural, you know, uh, regular flavored product? So I do, uh, I do egg flavor with breakfast because mm-hmm. doy, it of makes course sense. I would. Uh, right. Lunch, I just do a regular one. And then uh, dinner, I, I generally go, I haven't eaten meat in years, but that's kind of a fun workaround with Girl Air is you can get the beef one. And so I do that with dinner. A big breath of beef, yes. Big hit of beef. And then you're just on the floor for... 20 to 30 minutes yeah and i so when i that's the one i did i did the beef flavor one. Oh, awesome uh, and and uh i i had just like professor i got foam around my mouth but uh-huh. like because i was shaking it got into my eye and uh i couldn't tell you what i saw but it felt like i was reaching through time and like touching myself in a different time stream. Has anyone ever said that about your product? Uh, no, definitely. No, uh, definitely not. Okay. Could we, I, sorry. Okay, so is there, prob- do, who edits this? Uh, I'll, I edit. So, okay. Could you, you cut just, that out, please? Cut what out? What you just Going said? Going through time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's, um, yeah, that's not something I've heard before, but that is also something that I would not want other people to hear, even though I definitely, you know, no one has said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. That, yeah. um, just cut that, I just can cut make sure that, that right out. If you want, you can put in one of my speeches in there instead. Okay. Do you have any suggestions of what I should say? Uh, what you should say is that you had an amazing experience on Girl Air. It made you really feel like you were like accessing another plane, uh, but there, not in the okay, way that cool. felt scary, threatening, or too, too different. Uh, okay. This is something that, you know, we want to put in the air for everybody. So, so you know, and, and take this out as well. But, you know, you don't, you don't want to, people will get afraid if they think that they'll, okay, you know, walk yeah. outside their home and, and, and be traveling through time okay i'll be i'll I'll, I'll take it back just a little bit so yeah a little bit of it got in my eye and i just felt like you know uh i just had an amazing experience and it just like i just i don't know you know like i just wanted to say that oh my gosh that's so amazing thank you for uh thank you for using the product thank well you know thank you for making the product (laughs) i I have um a sort of a logistical question um again i don't Uh want to um, hop on Negging. this. But, <laughs> okay, uh, what's your question? Um, well, um, so you have, um, if you know, you've experienced this uh, whenever you uh, hit the can. Um, uh-huh. This sort of 20 minute, um, one could call it a sort of a paralysis, a seizure, um, and many different uh, sort of uh, words could work. Um, I don't know what the uh, a girl uh, approved term uh-huh. is. For the actual experience, um, if this is if this is indeed in all of the air, and yeah. um, it's just out there in the air, you know, keeping us in our shapes and things, and um, yeah. will the the this this experience, um, it doesn't seem like it would ever stop. Would you want it to? Why would you want it to? I guess well, I, my I, I, I'll answer your question with a question. A uh, very good question. Um, I guess so. Uh, you know, from my perspective, and and from what I what I gather, the 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 the, the benefit of this um, experience is sort of the post. Um, again, I'm I'm looking for a better word than seizure, and I'm 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 struggling. So please correct me if there's something better I can use. <laughs> um, but okay, the, okay, okay. No, go ahead. Continue. I'm well. It, you know, it, the 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 We don't call them seizures. Sort of... We call them ex- experiences. It's a spiritual experience. It's a release of energy, right? 
And don't Indeed. worry about the energy. It's don't worry. I mean, like we don't need to get too specific about the kind of energy. Um, well, yes, exactly. We're all, we're always releasing energy at all at all times. We're generating, um, you know, heat at at this very moment. Um, so I'm, I, you know, um, now that you've sort of put put put, put a bit of a pin on, on that on that point, perhaps I'll I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to think on that later. But um, yeah, yeah, the, I guess the, you the, will. the exper- the experience, the experience, um, uh-huh. the spiritual experience. Um, yeah, is it not? part of the experience to have the experience end and then sort of the the euphoria of of the experience being over the 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 benefit um to brain and body of being done with the seat the the exper- the the experience sorry well, um no. <sighs> look i mean are you what when you say that are you referring to the sweet release of death because if so yes yeah, chill out, chill out, Professor. Yeah, is what I, I mean, think. I guess my question for people who ask questions like that is like, are you so happy with how your life is right now that that you would want to be as you are forever? That's a good point. I am not. Um, right. Is... I was miserable before I started doing girl air all the time. I was absolutely miserable. I was racked with guilt. I have no idea why I would have been feeling that way. It's not about, you know, certain ways of addressing self-improvement. They just take so so long and we don't have much time. And so I find it much preferable to uh, to do girl air, to sell girl air and um, and to not really think about consequences i think that we're, mm-hmm. we're too focused on on consequences and that's really screwed my life up to be honest this sounds fair um it sounds yes science is indeed a series of consequences from actions did you guys watch my trial on tv oh, back in the know, day <laughs> multiple times a year I was like so upset, right? I yeah, I was right there with you. I did see that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you were like the darling of America for like a whole year for that, you know? Yes. Like everyone talked about how how bad it was for you. I got to go to the Met Gala. Yeah. That's crazy. It, good on, good for us, you know, good for yeah. society is what my takeaway. It, it is important to um, forgive and to support the rehabilitation of those who have made mistakes. So, yes. My point is, my point is that uh, I, I feel that, um, you know, perking everyone up a little, what's so wrong about that? The experience is bound to end eventually one way or another so insightful i feel like this is a great spot for us to segue to our final kind of uh segment uh where we go to the universe of twitter um and as a social media media advocate i'm sure you're familiar with this space as well we get we get questions from twitter these questions are taken from the at prof scott bug twitter handle uh and that's the show's twitter handle listeners can follow us and ask uh, Professor Scott Bug questions featured during the segment. I curate it, and here we go. I'm going to start with uh, at Weak Bone Man asks, "Girl air is universal air, in my opinion. Just open my mouth up like a snake and pump us all up forever." IMO hate normal stupid air. Any responses to that? That normal stupid air is what makes you able to have the your weak bone your bones would be uh, would be nothing you would have no fingies to type this ignorant <laughs> disgusting tweet of yours about how okay. uh, i it, look listen i just feel like I, this is like kind of taking a turn and it, i don't I'm, like sorry i'm feeling um, a lot of male anger mhm mhm i see it I see. Um, uh, I think this is an incredible tweet. I think that you know, I I think to not like this tweet is to 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 not like self expression, and uh, you know, I think we should all be encouraging people to express how they feel, especially if it's if it's positive uh, towards uh, um, my stuff. 
I, yes, I, um, see, okay, I will just say, you're right, I didn't mean to bring a negative energy to, to this, um, and so I apologize for that. I will say that Girl Air, which is great, which we love, and we, so um, again, again, promo code in the description, so please use that, um, I would say it's not actually Universal Air if not everybody has it. I, I, I have to point out that words do mean things. And if okay. you, if, is that, I, I don't want to step on your toes. I don't no, want to. No, no, continue, continue. Um, I, that's, that's it. I just, I think that, um, you, it, girl air could be universal if, um, if everybody had a can, you know, if, there we if, go. If, 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 if it were given to everybody. Well, um, see, I, that, I, I totally agree. I think that we should, you know, I'm hoping long term to just remove the can from the equation and just, you know, have it just in the just air that's all it. around us all the yeah. time. So indeed, then you wouldn't indeed, have to open indeed. your mouth up like a snake, which frankly is the worst part of it. If there was a worst part, it's not really the worst part. Look, I and and again to all of the girl air users that have an issue with the size of the hose, um, you're totally right, uh, and uh, and we we are working on it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I think that's like all wrapped up. That one's all good. Professor agrees. We're all good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move on to our next tweet, which uh, Big Hats for Ants asks, how come people can't fly but birds can? We talk about how this makes us jealous of birds, but do you think birds are jealous of us? Hashtag girl air. <sighs> Juliet, what do you Professor, like to, do you want to take the substance of this question? I'd love to. Um, so I will say um, people can't fly. Um, it's not that um, birds are jealous of us or we're jealous of birds. Uh, air is resentful of us and does not allow us to fly. It prefers birds. It's not necessarily a personal thing. It's not... It, it has right. feelings about, you know, each individual person. It's just a, a general viewpoint. Some people call it bigotry. Um, and so they let birds fly. They lift them up. They make their, their shapes. They are in the shape of a bird. Their wings are in the shape of wings. They've got feather-shaped feathers. And the air lifts them up to a flying-shaped mm-hmm. flyer. Mm-hmm. Um, and this, this follow-up, um, you know, uh, perhaps... This user is jealous of birds, um, but I would say that people are not jealous of birds. If anything, I would say envy is a better is a better term for that. Um, hence, our, our our airplanes. Um, yeah. And, okay. uh, furthermore, hashtag girl air. Okay, it's finally something we can agree on. Uh, Juliet, do you have any two cents on birds? Yeah, I think that um, this user is clearly in a lot of emotional pain. And uh, Mm -hmm. the better question is not, you know, are birds jealous of us? But like, why are you concerning yourself with the perception of birds? Like they're they're literally not even people. Mm -hmm. They don't have any money or uh, and they can't run for office. So I don't really know why I would be concerned about what a bird thought of me. Fair enough. I think that that's very centered. Um, I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, At TikTok tweets, I want to know about farts. Are they bad for air? I wouldn't say they're bad for air. I wouldn't say anything particularly is bad for air um again i'm i'm still doing some some research on um this new femsigen situation but i wouldn't say anything is bad um, for air i, I think would definitely that not say that yeah it's bad for air it's good i i of course of course i i can't say with um c- uh, certainty about anything like that um but you know air just is um yes it has some sort mm-hmm. some feelings but um you know, farts are, in a sense, air. It's um, a type of air, and it's got little bits in it uh, that the air around it gives shape to. Um, 
you know, uh, what is what is what is a fart if not um, air surrounding tiny little poops? You know. Hey. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's how I think of it. That's exactly. I think the most insightful thing that uh, that you've said so far. I totally agree. Yeah, it's it's great. That that, that Thank was great. Thank you. Uh, at too big to nail asks hate regular air it can kick rocks i bet we could win if we attacked it first um i so okay i have i have to push back on this term regular air um mm -hmm. which implies a uh, special air which mm -hmm. i don't think um is necessarily a healthy or or scientific um approach to uh, the concept um, regular air is because it is it's good um, it's helpful it 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 keeps us all together keeps us in our neat little packages and I the think bones. that if we yeah. reject regular air then we could get into a situation where we are simply going back to the blob do we want to go back to the blob do we do we want to be a, a um. soup of everything where you know our liver is half a I cat. Think that that's, is, you're you're catastrophizing a little. I mean, it's you know the science is catastrophizing if that's the term you want to use. It's I you know there uh, study after study after study that shows if we yeah. do reject air, we will reblob, and the reblobification of the universe is uh, I would say quite terrifying, um, possibly even more terrifying than. Um, the spreading femsogen across the planet while we all have, um, you know, seizures forever. Um, so it's, it's, right, it's, it's can we experience stop spiritual seizure is experiences. So negative. Seizure together. is very negative. Sounds I'm, like everyone's in agreement. Spiritual experiences. I apologize. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, I think that I think you're being a bit of a drama queen about this. Uh, I don't know what this whole reblobification thing is, but um, I, I wholly reject it. I think we should I invite as many new uh, marketable ingredients into the air as we can possibly get funding for. Oh, interesting. I, I respectfully. Would you agree? Professor? I respectfully disagree. Okay. I. Misogynist. I this. Um, Women are I, really powerful. I, what, I'm gonna go to the uh, to the next tweet. Yes, let's uh, go to the next tweet. At give me your wallet tweets. Was Ang really the last of his kind? Because he had a family in the later seasons. I think I see what happened here. I think he's talking about the Nickelodeon hit show on Netflix. Uh, the last Airbender is that right? Does anyone? Yes, the, doc anyone the, doc the documentary Avatar: The Last Airbender. <laughs> the the yeah, you're right. Uh, that's true. I don't. Um, I guess other than the fact that there's Airbending in the title, I don't it's. I would say really. it is, is that unrelated a cartoon? Um, to this. Um, yeah, have you seen it? No, I don't watch cartoons. I'm an adult. Okay, that's indeed. Well, you know, it's an educational smart. cartoon. I think we can all learn something. You know, um, just because it's a cartoon doesn't mean it's not a, uh, uh, you know, a educational documentary um, exploring real um, mm -hmm. scientific elements and um, mm -hmm. and and theorems. So I think it, you know we don't need to disparage the presentation. Um, I do think it's unrelated to the the topic at hand. Um, and I will say that, yes, he was really the last of his kind. Okay. Yeah. I think you'd like it, Juliet. The main character, uh, bends the air to its, his will. I don't know if that, you know, is something you might be interested in. Um, the next tweet at Neil deGrasse Tyson tweets, bug you hackney pieces. Neil, oh, Neil, Neil, I am doing my best with what I have. Uh, you so are the sorry. hacky piece of garbage. Yeah, I, I don't know how that one got through. I don't know how it got through. Right now. You know, I, I would try a can this, right now, I, Professor. Look, Honestly, I would. Yeah, just, just, I yeah, just can up feel like if I did can up then I would not be able to continue the rest of this podcast That's due to true. 
having a 20 minute spiritual experience in which I convulse like a snake and expel foam from my mouth. So no, thank you. I will not be hitting a can right now. Different folks, different strokes, yeah. I guess. Indeed. Um, He's all scared. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just do <laughs> let's just do the last one. Uh, at Big Money Elbows asks, they say air is thinner high up in the atmosphere. Is that why planes can fly up there? Because they have less air to fight. I don't know why Twitter is... They think we need to be fighting air, and I don't, I it don't is know what... It's very upsetting and unsettling. It's, I, it's, yeah. I think, a, a symbol... Uh, uh, of of our uh, of our, of our times, a sign of our times that we right, are maybe. in this situation. Suddenly, you know, uh, just in the past, just in the past couple of years, people have been antagonistic towards air. And yeah. again, I just, I, 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 I do fear a reblobification, and and I fear that it's coming sooner than we mm-hmm. may think. But yes, to answer the question, yes, it is. Um, it's it's thinner up there, so they have less air to to sort of battle. That could change. It's also mm-hmm. a good point. Um, okay, mm, <clears throat> so I want to thank you both for spending your time with me this afternoon. Thank you, Scott Bug, but also obviously I want to thank Juliet Parker for stopping by and telling us about uh, Girl Air. And um, yeah, just uh, namely for you, Juliet. Yeah. Are there any, let's say, off the top of your head, comedians or websites or shows that you wish to plug right now before we end the program? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I just I just heard the most um, incredible show uh, th- this last week called um, the Bechdel Test Podcast. I think is what it was called and i think it's about like feminism and stuff so i'm generally supportive of it cool yeah Mm -hmm. um yeah i'd like to thank our twitter followers and all the commenters throughout the internet your um, input is obviously invaluable uh is there anything either of you guys want to kind of contentious episode but i feel like we left it in a good place is there any last remarks or thoughts you guys want to have uh otherwise we're kind of out of here uh, well, Professor, I just wanted to thank you again for your endorsement of the product. We're going to put that up on the website right now. I um, will be looking into what I am able to do about that legally. But in the meantime, refresh the page right thank now. You. It's already there. Uh, let's see. Yes, there I am. And there are some words that I have said kind of out of order. A bit, okay. you've been snipped a bit, and you've sort of, sort of Frankenstein'd um, some sen- sentences there, um, but that is certainly me. There it's just a, with, just a, a liberal can use of, of ellipses. Yay! A very liberal use of ellipses, I would say. Yeah. Yay! Um, so I will assume that that is technically fine, True. and there's yep. nothing I can do we, about that. And that is why this show can continue. However, right now, uh, this concludes another episode of Bewilderments and Scientifics. I've been and continue to be Abe Epperson. Thank you again, both of you, for joining us. Thank you so Good much. Luck at the FDA, ma'am. Oh, I will be victorious. We will see. Hi everyone, Abe again. This podcast was a collaboration between the creators of Some More News and Small Beans. If you like this podcast, please stop by patreon.com slash smallbeans, where you will get new episodes early, as well as exclusive content provided by Small Beans. We love you!